Hai hai semuanya, gue Zeno, hari ini kita lanjutin lagi game The Suicide of Rachel Foster Kita udah masukin hari kelima untuk tinggal di hotel ini Yang awalnya kita bahkan nggak mau tinggal di sini tuh selama 20 menit, akhirnya jadi 5 hari Gue nggak tahu kita akan ada di hotel ini sampai hari keberapa Ya mudah-mudahan makin seru, kita segera masuk ke game ya, yuk is ordered, sir. You awake? Sort of. You forget your coffee? For once, I don't need it. I got to talk to you about something. Um, okay. Hmm. Oh, dimati. Oh ini Rachel Foster. Is she really dead? Sudah apa lagi? Suara air. Badannya ditemukan. Kelihatannya bunuh diri. Wow, oke. Okay. Here I am. You didn't tell me you knew Leonard. I, I thought we'd been through that. Let me finish. I spent the night going through his stuff, and I want to know what you think. About what? You obviously know more about this place than I do. About what went on here, since I left at least. What do you mean, you went through his stuff? What are you looking for? Someone calls me and says Rachel is alive. Then a lipstick appears out of nowhere. It feels like something weird's going on. Rachel is dead. That's what everyone says. But maybe the story deserves a second pass. There are too many gray areas. Look, the storm is dying down. You'll be able to leave soon and go back to your life. And you can forget about the whole thing like you did 10 years ago. <laughs> what do you care about this old business? It's not worth losing sleep over just to play detective. <laughs> I'm not busy at the moment. I want to follow my instinct. I haven't done it in so long and it feels like things don't add up here. Okay, let me hear what you're thinking. If there's one thing Leonard taught me, it's that you've got to listen to what's buzzing in your head. First, it might just be a confusing noise, but if you connect the dots, then it starts making sense. And right now I've got a beehive in my head. <laughs> All right, let's go hunt some bees then. Serius. Hah? Dia ditemukan sedang hamil. Sembilan minggu. Oh dia bundernya tahun 81 Jujur gue agak miss ini si Rachel ini siapanya dia sih Lupa gue Ada tiri ya You know, I can't stop thinking about Rachel's father. Reverend Foster. He was a very strict man. Harsh. Even for pastor standards. 
He and Leonard spent hours debating the nature of reality, the universe, and God. Well, opposites often attract. Do you ever see him? Rarely. He gives a service once in a while. Priests always made me nervous. <laughs> Them and their invisible boss. His daughter's death destroyed his ego. His faith made him even more cynical and lonely than he already was. I can remember him demanding, demanding, demanding total perfection from Rachel. That was insane. You don't think he could have harmed his daughter? Hey, no, no. But... Even Reverend Foster is a player we shouldn't underestimate in this story. Just saying. Uh, right. Remember the lipstick I found downstairs? Yep, you made a big deal about it. It doesn't smell. Should it? After they've been open for a while, lipsticks smell really bad. Maybe there's been other women. I mean... From what I gather, Leonard was a sort of recluse. And don't forget, the lipstick is really old. Um, could the cold have preserved it? Possibly. Anything else? Hey, I found a book in Leonard's things. It's a collection of poetry, but it's got notes written in it. Did your father write them? What do they say? Dates, notes, thoughts. Listen to this. Today I saw Rachel, or Rachel is sad, or Rachel says she feels alone. He kept a diary about her. But the book was printed eight years after Rachel's death. Do you mean it's like he was talking with Rachel after she died? As if he saw her. Well, I mean, there must be an explanation. Of course, there's an explanation for everything, and we've got to find it. Udah cuma itu dong. Bimbing sama meja ya. Coba gue cek lagi. Oh benar kan ada. Uh, apa ya? Friend stories. Friend stories beda. In this article from a couple years back, there's a statement by some girl who affirms she saw Rachel in a hallway at the Timberline. Who's this girl? Uh, a classmate, Glenda Ferguson. I tore out the page. I think the magazine was M.T. Woman. Nicole, that's a gossip magazine. Biru. They would sell their Biru. mother, Biru. even their cousins and nephews, just for a bunch of new readers. Biru. But she was a classmate. She couldn't have been wrong. Rachel fell 90 feet into a void. She can't be alive. I thought I was the skeptical one here. So, listen to this. Graphologists doubt the authenticity of the suicide note left by the girl. Who said that? An investigative journalist. The article came out a year after her death. You think it's a setup? Perhaps. Okay, well, I'll hear you out. I found a copy of the local paper, dated December 29th, 1981, the day that the body was discovered. According to the forensics report, Rachel had been dead for days. She was nine weeks pregnant. Uh, yeah, that was the official version. Okay, I'd say that's enough. Yeah, that's enough for tonight. Uh, today, or what the hell time is it? You think there's a lot to dig up in this old story? Maybe, maybe not. 
until I know exactly what happened. Any objections? You don't need my approval. Good job. You're getting the hang of it. But sometimes it's better to leave the skeletons in the closet. And once they come out, you never know what they'll have to say. It's a risk I already considered. I can handle it. Hard-headed like your father. <laughs> Trust me, at least on this one thing. Go to bed. You need it. Agent Crawford, this bit of advice. I'll follow it to the T. Oke, D5. Cukup pendek ya di sini tapi kita dapat continuity cerita. Uh, malah bukan sih menurut apa ya. Dapat potongan cerita utamanya sih. Jadi kita nemuin beberapa clippingan koran dan sebagainya. Untuk kita kumpulin jadi satu uh, jadi dijadikan petunjuk buat kita untuk menyelesaikan masalah ini perhaps gue nggak tahu apakah kita juga akan menjadi detektif di sini ya itu aja sih untuk hari kelima kita kita lanjutin lagi nanti thank you banget yang udah nonton bye bye